there's a lot of really awesome stuff to cover today we got a bunch of updates regarding the rtx 50 series of graphics cards new updates regarding DirectX 12 some information regarding meta's ai stuff prices for the rtx 50 series some more updates regarding the bus on the 50 series and then some news regarding lpddr6 the next generation version but first let's go ahead and cover this article right here regarding DirectX 12 work graphs officially out and the new gpu autonomy system that is aiming to eliminate cpu bottlenecks which i think is pretty cool so microsoft officially released today a new directx 12 feature that's been available for some time in preview introducing new types of gpu anatomy that attempt to eliminate cpu bottlenecks in a lengthy blog post amar patel engineer direct 3d and tex riddle engineer directx compiler provide an explanation for works graphs a system for gpu anatomy in d3 d12 that aims to address the limitations in general compute workloads on gpus and then unlock latent gpu capabilities in simpler terms the new system aims to switch to a more efficient gpu driven rendering system reducing the need to use the cpu in different workloads so i'm going to go ahead and let you guys read this right here as i kind of talk about this because there was actually an interview with i'm pretty sure it was harvard and the uh and jensen which is part of the reason that i have this article right here open because i watched an uh an interview with him with the harvard youtube channel the other day it was super inspiring he's a super he's a very uh forgot to say to like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment <laughs> like subscribe leave a comment all that good stuff inspiring person to listen to i don't know how else to ex to say that um but he was really talking about how when he grew his business he he put his goal at the very top like his actual vision of the company and then he started working his way down so that is how he has managed to do all of this stuff like he comes up with these like crazy ideas and works his way down so we're, we're getting to a point where it was 60 years ago that the cpu was developed right and uh so the cpu is is pretty old now and we're we're getting to a point where this ai software and stuff is really going to start needing gpus like more power so nvidia hits the iphone moment of ai highlighting its latest rtx advancements for pc across gaming creating and everyday use so the cool thing about this man is that we're getting to a point where nvidia is basically emulating every single game that you could possibly play the, the interviews that i mentioned so this is why i always say like I don't understand why people are complaining about NVIDIA graphics cards being overpriced and then comparing that to AMD and Intel. You are paying for the extra features that you get with an NVIDIA graphics card. Or in other words, you have a choice now. So when people complain about NVIDIA and NVIDIA cards being overpriced, they are expensive. And I'm not going to argue with that. But what I'm trying to say is like, why are you complaining about a graphics card when you have a choice to get an amd graphics card the charts that you see with amd if you get an actual amd graphics card and this is actually where amd fans and the fanboyism is actually correct okay when you get an amd graphics card and you actually use it in games it performs very well there's a lump sum of titles that completely tank the charts that you see for averages because there are some games that are going to run horrible on amd graphics cards whereas nvidia this is kind of how they've designed their company i obviously cannot cover like three hours worth of interviews in a single video for you but if you go and watch these interviews with jensing man like he's his like everybody has nvidia every company can use nvidia every gamer can use nvidia like he's releasing graphics cards for all of us to like develop these ai softwares like it's he basically made like open soft or open source graphics cards pretty much that we all pay for <laughs> but anyways but uh so yeah so that's pretty much the, so the reason that i'm i was explaining that so is the they're basically emulating PC games. Like you can take you can take these old games that may not have the best graphics and you can basically remaster them. You know what I mean? Like 
and that's AI doing that. So this article is just, and then I have another article basically just kind of showcasing like how this is done. And uh, so this is the, this, so this is the, on the PC gamer website. It's just RTX remix is a great equalizer, bringing veteran and hobbyist devs together to remaster the most beloved and best PC games. So you can kind of see how this, these, how, how cool this AI stuff is and why I'm like so interested in it. Let me uh, go full screen with you guys. Hold up. All right. So go ahead and play it. Ooh, baby. Look at that. Yo. It's pretty cool, right? I think that's pretty sweet. But, uh, yeah, man, I just think this, I personally really am. I'm very interested in all this stuff. Oh my God. Really, dude. I didn't realize this was on that website. I'm not reading this. I'm sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, skip this article. Basically he so and this is like this is like part of the interviews that were the other day so there you go so i'm gonna go ahead and break all that stuff down for you so basically in these interviews he was kind of like talking about the, at least the most interesting thing for me is like being able to digitalize everything and what happens when we digitalize everything is is, is where these uh these deep learning ai softwares are going to come into play and these large language models and all of that kind of stuff like the llms and he was kind of talking about how if we can digitalize anything, what, what happens when we digitalize stuff is AI now understands it. So we, if we can like just, so some stuff that we're like, we're, we're trying to digitalize right now, it has, has a lot to do with biology. Like we're trying to figure out how we can digitalize protein and how we can digitalize a cell and how we can digitalize an atom and how we can digitalize air whatever you see he's like all these like particles and stuff so when you digitalize it ai is able to it's able to like gather like our whole internet's worth of information and then it understands us and <laughs> It's just, it's just so much going on with AI, but it, dude, it's super interesting to me. I just think it's super interesting, but anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this article here pretty quickly regarding building M Meta's gen AI infrastructure, just cause I've kind of rambled on quite a bit here. And uh, to be fair, I don't really understand a lot of this stuff anyway. So I'm trying really hard to learn computer science guys, but like, so something that a lot of you don't understand is that the whole reason I make videos like this is because it, so as somebody that has high functioning autism, reading is very difficult for me. But when I when I when I make these videos and I go back to my actual video editor, that is where I learn. That is where I start consuming the information. That is where I'm able to actually whatever and to be fair some of you may be in the same boat as me hence why you're watching a video rather than what than going to read these articles marking a major investment in meta's ai future we are announcing two 24k gpu clusters and we're sharing details on the hardware network storage design performance and software that is going to help extract high throughout the reliability for various ai workloads we use this cluster designed for llama 3 training we are strongly committed to open compute and open source. We build these clusters on top of Grand Teton, Open Rack, and PyTorch, and continue to push innovation across the industry. This announcement is one step in our ambitious infrastructure roadmap. By the end of 2024, we're aiming to continue to grow the infrastructure built out that will include 30, 350 thousand nvidia h100 gpus as part of a portfolio that will feature compute power equivalent to nearly 600,000 h100s whoa baby this is where having multi billions of dollars comes into play oh my goodness bro wow all right let's actually do some just i i swear i'm not going to get too off topic here that's 14 billion right because like that's crazy bro so if like I promise what I promise let's just because I want to see what it like it, what their end game is. Oh my god, so forty thousand dollars times six hundred thousand. <laughs> oh my god. I literally can't even why am I having a brain fart? Uh 
Mark Zuckerberg. There we go. Mark Zuckerberg can't even afford that. Woo! <laughs> See, he needs to only buy 350 to begin with. Then he's going to drop 600. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. Some of these GPUs is pure speculation at this point, but I genuinely think that Nvidia is going to release the 5090 and 40 or er, 5090 and 5080 at the same price of the 4090 and the 4080. You got to remember that the 40 series launched during a terrible time and there was a lot of shortages and there was a lot of scalpers and there was a lot of whatever demand if that's how you want to, to put it. And because of that, NVIDIA, they like they didn't have a choice but to mark their graphics cards up, dude. Like, it, you know what I mean? So I genuinely don't think that we're going to get, we're going to go above what the 40 series released at. If anything, the 40 series is going to go down in price because there's no denying that they are getting expensive, even if I do feel as though they're worth it. So NVIDIA Blackwell GB203 GPU is gonna be featuring 256 bus and GB205 with 192 bit. Claims the leaker, Copi7 Kimi, and uh, what's the other guy there? The Moore's Law is dead on, or right. I'm not gonna be positive. The guy that we covered the other day on that, all the RT, like the 5060, the 5070, the 5080, and the, to be actually thank you for that as well because of me showing you all of the information, the video still did very well. Um, so it's, it's nice to know that I can do that now when we get massive leaks like that, covering every single GPU that's going to be releasing and then comparing it to the 40 series. It's, it's nice to know that I'm able to do that with you guys. And I have a community that's actually here to watch me, whatever, screw around in videos <laughs> and, uh, just talk about stuff because that's really all I do. So that this right here, this is the chart. So we have GB202, 203, 5, 6, 7, and then we have the 100, and we have 102, 3, 4, no 5, 6, and 7. Was there even a 5 for this? Uh, but anyways, we got the SMs, memory bus width, L2 cache, TDP, SKU. But uh, we only have information for the... All right, so that's... All right, so we got 5090 in the cards over here. The TBC is confusing me. I'm not going to keep looking at that. <laughs> um, so the next gen LP DDR6 memory specs could have could be unveiled. Oh, actually, so I want to so I'm actually I want to show you guys something here. So uh, so Amazon just barely got the the new cases and uh, or not cases the new uh, the new wire. So the the cableless this has been on Amazon for a while, but the the new case that support and this does support the the project msi zero so if any of you do want to go and grab one of these i'll if i can remember i'll toss a link down in the description i am going to be ordering these myself this is a z790 i can very easily swap the 14900 to this and then uh yeah i'm just concerned about i don't like that i don't like the glass top there i think that's kind of ugly looking that's just me though other than that, I would like it. Maybe I could even put the Lee and Lee thing up top there. But uh, let's go ahead and come back here. So the LP DDR6. So the maximum speed of the low power DDR memory. So we have LP DDR6, 12,800. And then we come up here to the LP DDR5. It's like literally double the speed, bro. That's crazy. Even for the, the 5X and stuff. But anyways, that's that. And my friends, end of video. Um, yeah. Thank you all for the support on this channel. It genuinely does mean a lot to me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.